Hello, <clears throat> Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is May the 5th of 2019. So, I guess it's a happy Cinco de Mayo, uh, a Mexican holiday. Uh, the 5th of May, let's see, Cinco de Mayo, in Latin America, Spanish for the 5th of May, is an annual celebration held on May 5th, the date observed to commemorate the Mexican Army's victory over the French Empire at the Battle of, I'm going to get this wrong, Puebla, on May 5th of 1862. So I guess I'll put a link to this down there. So if any of you are interested, it's uh, interesting to me that uh, that was 1862 and that's during the American Civil War. Here we were having our American Civil War in 1862. Mexico was battling the French forces. Uh, it says celebration is parades, food, music, folklore, dancing, and battle reenactments. Um, so, back to something I know something about now. Because um, I don't know anything about... I I think if Americans are really... We are really bad about... I think I'm higher up on the scale than uh, most people. But uh, Americans do not know much about other nations. Uh, just We just don't. And it's embarrassing because people outside the United States know a great deal. All around the world know a great deal about the United States, and I'm sure they have misconceptions or whatever. But, um, anyway, this is going to be my new format that I mentioned in my last video. This, and then I will go to my G7 camera for the last part, which is going to be, I'm going to tell you about my experience with, uh, I'm a, I hope I don't have an experience soon with hospice care for myself, although in a way, I don't know. But I want to tell you a little story about uh, my mother and uh, the hospice care that we, <clears throat> we got for her and the situation that happened. So that's going to be pretty, coming up pretty quick here. And that will be just using the uh, G7 camera. And uh, for the person who left the comment on how to set the camera, I did set the camera, my Panasonic G7. The Panasonic line, as he mentioned, and as I knew also, and I should have, uh, I love the Panasonic cameras. Everything, it just... But the, for video, the, I'm not sure it would be that for still too, maybe. I don't think so. But for video, it has a little bit of a problem with the focus. So it's recommended, if you can, is to turn off the focus. And that's what he recommended and some other things. And I did set the camera that way. So I will be using it in that mode here in a little bit. So if it's no good, blame him. Just kidding. Uh, also, I ordered a cable for my Panasonic G7. I had one of the cables before, but it came with a video device, and I forget the name of it. And I gave that video device to my daughter, and the cable came with it, so the cable went. And I don't think I have another cable. I might have a whole box of cables. But I ordered and it'll be here tomorrow. Or uh, wait a minute. I think it's coming. Okay, this is it's after midnight, so I think it's coming today. Ordered a cable that which will go into my G7 
HDMI port. And that's, uh, I'm not sure what they call that port, mini, micro, or whatever. And then it will go into uh, the HDMI port on the monitor. See what it go into? No, uh, you know, go yeah, go into the monitor. That way, I can uh, feed the video out of the camera, and it could go right where you're seeing me now on this, or I can switch um, and have it go to full screen here. So whatever. I'll have to try it out tomorrow, but that's, so there'll probably be a change tomorrow. But there is, uh, that's coming. What else is coming? Well, let's go see. Come on here. Amazon. Go to orders. Also, a couple people, here's what my order is tomorrow. Uh, a couple of people complained about the uh, smoke detector chirping. So I have a Duracell battery coming, 9-volt battery coming tomorrow for that. Here's the Panasonic uh, cable. It's 5 foot long. And it goes from HDMI type D, which I think is uh, the coming out of the video card and goes to type A or is it I can't remember then I'm also getting this which I really don't have several of these but I'm getting this uh, quick shoe adapter I'm not sure why I'm getting it because I have several two or three only one of my tripods has this uh, quick release thing that is standardized which you slide it in there, makes it really neat. And I have uh, one of those uh, devices for when you're walking that's weighted. I have one of those that works with that and something else. So anyway, um, so this is the order that's coming tomorrow. Here's the mouse that I got a couple of days ago. Here is the uh, microphone that I returned to Amazon and I actually it actually was not defective uh, I just couldn't get the gain up and here it was USB and here I'm using a USB and I can get the gain up here uh, so very few items have I returned I've Got several items sitting around here that I got them and I just didn't, but I didn't return them. Um, so anyway, in a little bit you're going to see the video from my Panasonic Jeans G7. What did I want to mention? Um, one thing I could do is just minimize this. You don't need to see the, probably just confusing to you. Um, this is my YouTube page. This is a, uh, so you could do, uh, okay, I'll put the link below. It's called Great Big Story. That's the name of it. It has three and a half million subscribers. It's the first time I found it. Their videos are, you know, very short and um, very good. Uh, it's just amazing. I mean, how I ramble on here and people like this can make very short videos. You know, they're all very short and very good, very entertaining, very interesting. So I'll put a link below to this. Here's, this is not the hospice care that I use. I'm going to get ready to transition over there and tell you. Uh, 
I'm sure that hospice care is worldwide. It probably originated someplace else in the United States. Said, hey, that's a good idea. Um, but it tells you hospice care is specialized end-of-life care that attends to patients' needs in order to enhance their quality of life. Care is provided by a team of health professionals skilled in pain and symptom management, providing comfort and care to patients and their entire family. And I think you have to be, you know, it says right there, the goal of hospice during a terminal illness is compassionate compare, care and comfort rather than a cure. To be eligible for, for hospice, a doctor must verify a prognosis of six months or less to live if the patient's illness runs its natural course. And that doesn't mean you, you know, <laughs> that doesn't mean that uh, if you haven't passed on to the great beyond in uh, six months, they don't go and uh, smother you or anything. I mean, you can, just if the doctor, and you know, if it takes longer, then it takes longer. Uh, so the uh, my mother had um, um, well, she was staying at home, lived in a mobile home, a nice one, and uh, she just didn't get out for the last few years of her life. She just, she never went anywhere. A few couple of times she had to go by ambulance to, you know, a hospital because she got her electrolytes messed up. And when she was in the hospital, she was combative and with the nurses and all types of stuff. And the nurses told me, uh, you know, well, you need to talk to a social worker about putting her into uh, a nursing home or something like that. And I did talk to the social worker. I explained that, you know, as soon as she's home in her own environment, she'll be fine. And she was. Got her home and she was just fine. She never. So we were lucky when Alzheimer's hit. And I'm not sure how long, uh, you know, I didn't notice it. It really, you know, the symptoms and things were there, I, and I had been around those kind of people, you know, working in the hospital. And even at a hospital I worked at, there was uh, a security officer, I think probably in his 50s, that got, I got hired in, made a security officer, and then it was like... Uh, he acted erratically. Remember, we got people calmed down in the waiting room, and then he went in and he got them all riled up. Uh, and I wasn't working the shift that they went up and there was a guy that was combative and the security officer, the other security officer, had worked for years in psych, the psych unit, and he was able to get the guy all calmed down, everything was okay, and then bang, all of a sudden this security officer who we did not know had Alzheimer's, <laughs> he jumped right in the middle of this guy's chest and was screaming, you know, screaming at him, and their other security officer, you know, they got him off, and I was like, you know, what's wrong? Um, so anyway, I was working then out at the small hospital and a security officer from the main hospital called me and I can't remember the, I can remember the name of the security officer that called me, can't remember the, the, the name of the security officer that had Alzheimer's, we didn't know he had Alzheimer's at that point, anyway, security officer calls me and he says, let's say Joe, well Joe is, uh, he didn't call me about that but he he called and said, Joe is stupid. And I said, no, the guy isn't stupid. I guess the guy used to be a union official. He negotiated contracts, uh, you know, settled grievances and did all kinds of stuff. I said, he's not stupid. What? He says, yeah, he's stupid. Something, you know, he's stupid. And uh, he said, when, uh, when you, you know, you do the, we rotate every down there every two hours. So maybe say you're in a car, you write down your beginning mileage, and then you write down the ending mileage, and you know, 
do the do the math for how many miles you drove. So uh, Khan, the security officer I was talking to, he said uh, he can't do basic math. He can't do you know figure up six miles or whatever it was in a two-hour period or something. Like that. I said no. I said uh, I said if it were me, if I were the supervisor or whatever, I would have him go for some type of medical exam or something to see if there's maybe something wrong with him. And so then eventually it came, I don't know how long it was, wasn't immediate because it took, at that point for Alzheimer's, I think it took a little while, I think they had to eliminate everything else and then they knew it was Alzheimer's. But anyway, he went, you know, of course they, he was let go. <laughs> Not a good idea to have somebody, a security officer who's armed with, you know, even if you're not armed, you know, with uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, but he went down, I mean, fast, and was in a nursing home fast with that, with the uh, Alzheimer's. So uh, with my mother, I didn't notice. It just happened. I just, uh, because she, she did her thing every day, the same little routine, and she never went anyplace. And we lucked out in that regard, you know, when the Alzheimer's was full blown, she never ever tried to leave. And that's a problem you have with a lot of Alzheimer's patients is, you know, you have to watch them all the time because they'll go, they'll just leave. They'll go someplace and they're not, they don't know where they are. They'll walk into traffic, all kinds of stuff. So we had it really, well, another reason that I had it easy was that my daughter Hillary, uh, moved in with her and took care of her. So that relieved me of having to do, she, you know, Hillary took care of all that stuff. Okay, don't touch the mouse. I'm going to tell you a little story about my mother and uh, all time, well, my mother and hospice care and through no fault of hospice care at all, how things did not go the way they should have and the way things did not go the way you you want them to go so don't touch the mouse I will be I will be right back okay I hope I'm in focus because uh, I need glasses because I can't <laughs> I have the screen turned this way, but it's uh, about an arm length and a half away. So with my mother, anyway, hospice, we got contacted hospice care, and uh, a nurse came out and assessed the situation and, you know, got to talk to the doctor and did all this kind of stuff. And the hospice, you know, nurse explained the services that they were going to provide and everything and they said uh, what we do and they had me fill out paperwork and sign things and all that kind of stuff and they said okay and my mother had a plan all set up for her funeral it had been set up for years and uh, uh, I don't see the battery thing showing there Ooh, that's kind of dangerous isn't it <laughs> better make this fast Anyway, my mother had her funeral plan and everything all set up for years and years. And uh, so the hospice nurse explained, okay, <clears throat> when your mother passes, you know, we'll be coming out. You call us when you need us. Uh, when your mother passes away, you don't need to call 911. You know, she doesn't need to go into the hospital. Uh, you know, you just call the funeral home and they have the paperwork, they know everything, we've made arrangements, they come and they pick her up. And so, you know, we ask, my Hillary and I, we ask any questions we had, you know, and the nurse explained, you know, that, uh, and my mother had already stopped at that point, you know, did not want anything to eat. In fact, I really noticed that she had it at Alzheimer's at Thanksgiving. She cooked with Hillary, helped her and they made turkey and everything and my mother was not eating anything at all and she loved to eat. 
Also, television was something she loved all the time and had it going all the time, and she had stopped watching television. Uh, Reagan was president then because uh, my mother was saying that Mrs. Reagan was saying, talking to my mother from the television set and saying bad things to my mother. So, uh, so anyway, that was the arrangement. I think we had the service no longer than three weeks, and I think maybe two weeks. Uh, nurse came out. My mother had never had any pain or anything. The nurse came out, checked, and left, and then a day or two later, I'm not sure exactly, all this happened very quickly. Uh, she didn't last six months. <laughs> uh, my uh, mother complained of some pain. She never complained of pain, so Hillary called hospice care. A nurse came over, checked her, and a prescription. I think she actually brought the medicine, I believe, uh, for my mother to take. So my mother was given like one dose of the medicine, and she just, you know, died. So um, Hillary called me, and Hillary called her grandmother. Uh, no, Hillary called her, yeah, her grandmother to come over, and uh, anyway, called me, and I went over, and then uh, I I called the funeral home, and we called the uh, hospice care nurse. She said she was on her way, and. Uh, then I had to run back to pick up something. I don't know what it was. And we're talking, my mother lived on, C, I'll simplify, C Street, and I lived on J Street, so five blocks away or whatever, something like that. And uh, the funeral home apparently tried to call the number that I had called. And I think that was before cell phones. Anyway, the nursing home, or the uh, funeral home tried to call. They couldn't get me, and I was only gone for five minutes or less. They couldn't get me, so they called the uh, Belton Police Department, you know, and reported a death, you know. And what was happening right then was, a few blocks away from us, somebody for decorative purposes had put a shell out on their driveway you know maybe two of them I don't know and I don't know anything about uh, artillery shell I don't know if it was a ship shell or a, from a cannon or I don't know it was apparently a big one and somebody called the police and reported a bomb so the police department ended up there with you know the district cars two or three, a detective, the fire department, an ambulance, they were all there. And then they determined this is not, you know, it's not functional or whatever. And then they get a call of a dead body. And so, anyway, I am back at my mother's place and then I hear the sirens a bunch of them coming, screaming, you know. And I thought, oh no. And then the, I forget his name, I wouldn't say it anyway if I knew it, the first Belton officer arrives and uh, the hospital had a nickname for him. The, I didn't. The nurses and staff there, I can't remember, it was not a, not a good, mem not a good nickname for him. It wasn't crazy, that wouldn't be a good nickname. But it was because he was, uh, what would I say, a hot dog, cowboy, overly aggressive, uh, I, you know, like he put on his gloves, getting ready to leave the ER, and I think a nurse or a doctor, why do you have those gloves? Uh, for, you know, something, I, I can't remember the exact, but anyway, we had this name for him. He was the first one to arrive. So he came up and I, I said, oh, 
He said, we well, got a call, and I said, yeah, you know, I said, well, my mother's under hospice care. I said, you really shouldn't have been called. I, uh, I said, but, you know, you, you were. He said, we have to respond, you know, we have to respond on all dead bodies calls or whatever. We respond on them all. And I said, no, you don't. He says, yes, we do. Anyway, because I explained, my mother's right there. She passed away. She was under hospice care. Then, you know, but, well, anyway, I said, and I could hear all the equipment coming, you know, I said, could you give them a call and tell them they do not need to respond code three. They can turn, you know, and just, they don't need, no, we have to respond, you know. And I said, you know, you don't have to respond. Yes, we do. And I said, well, at Research Belton Hospital last year, 40 people died and you didn't respond one time. At Beautiful Savior's nursing home, I don't know how many people there expired, you didn't respond one time. I said, so you don't have to respond all the time, but you're, you know, I said, you know. So then the paramedics came, you know, they came in and they knew me. Well, I knew all of them. Uh, so they came. So then, so fire trucks out there, ambulance, bunch of police cars, all the police officers, they all come in. And uh, then, um, then the hospice nurse shows up. And she comes in, Mr. Howard. What? 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 what this? This is not the way. This is. This isn't supposed to work. That. What? Uh, why don't? Why, you know. And then I heard the helicopter. I knew it wasn't coming there. But, she said, "What's that?" I said, "Well, that's the helicopter. They call the helicopter too." She said, "What? What?" And I said, "No, just kidding. No, they're just going over to the hospital right over there." So that was. So anyway, everything got taken, you know, everything got taken care of, but uh, hospice care was great for my mother, but I think we had it for two weeks, three weeks at the very most, and I think it was actually about two weeks. Uh, my daughter, Hillary, of course Hillary feels bad about every living creature, I mean, God forbid, I, you know. She takes care of cats, and she, uh, if she sees a squirrel that's been run over, or a dead bird, or something, she cries for the bird. And the, and she was out here one day. A baby bird was flopping around on the ground, and uh, she was out there trying to get it. And its mother was, you know, coming around, and Hillary was trying to tell you know, tell the mother to. You know, get them telling the bird, to, you know, and uh, Hillary was out there two hours. And uh, finally, the mother bird came down with the baby bird a little bit, and then they both flew away. So, together. So, anyway, my Hillary felt, you know, she just gave my mother uh, one of the pills, and my mother went. My mother, or my, you know, Hillary felt bad. Anyway. That's the, uh, that's the story. Thank you for watching.